Well, hello, everybody. We thank you for joining us today for a very special moment. We have six people here today. Two of them, well, three of them is myself, Tasha, and Ashley. But our three special guests, which I know Tasha and Ashley are special too. But we have some other special people with us who are Jeff Parker, Nathan Carlson, and Phil Lawler. Welcome, guys. How are you guys? Thank you. Welcome to you as well. Nice to talk to all of you. Yeah, and this would be the first time you guys have really talk, talked uh, all together in a while, hasn't it? 20 years. Haven't seen, haven't seen these guys in 20 years. Uh, all together and to each other. Actually, I saw them all yesterday, yeah. but we're just going to say... <laughs> but we didn't talk to each other. That's what we're trying to get to. <laughs> well, we'll be having questions for um, each one of you guys, and probably some for all, but... You're, all of you are welcome to jump in and comment on whatever someone else says, especially if they say something bad about you. You're welcome to um, rep, uh, reprimand them about that. So feel free to jump in whenever. But um, the first question uh, we have is, um, actually, it's actually probably for all of you guys. How did you guys all meet uh, meet before? Or let me reword that. How did you all meet for the first time? It was a dark and evil night in Tijuana. Never forget it. I've known Phil for since the early 90s, probably 1990-ish. Yeah, right around in there. Well, actually, it's a little earlier than that, I think. Um, when, did you, when did you come to work at Focus? I was, uh, I am unable to remember. Okay, so I can help you guys out. Um, I met Jeffrey Parker. Uh, I don't know what year it was, but I know that it happened. 85 or 80, and, 80, 1985 and 1986. Is this interesting yeah, to right. anyone? <laughs> yeah, 1985, Jeff and I met, uh, Phil, Phil, I met, uh, it had to be 89, maybe 88. Yeah, I think it was the, around there. No, because I came to California, Los Angeles in 1986. And so uh, you and I met in Tacoma, Washington and got to be at least 94, 95. Um, I believe, unless I'm not not ninety. Sorry, eighty. Yeah, I hadn't graduated from college until eighty five, so we didn't meet before that. Did you? Were you uh, hired as a writer back uh, right out of college? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, so it was uh, nineteen eighty six ish that I moved down here, and we had met for a while before that. Actually, it's got to be later because I mean earlier because we did all that whole thing with the uh, PTO. Well, that's our blah, hour. Blah, blah. Uh, good chatting with you all. Great interview. So anyway, Jeff and I knew each other. Then I, and this will segue into one of the answers to my questions, I guess, that you had. But um, this has been old people try to remember when they met <laughs> and failed. Yeah, I did a, uh, I did a project for uh, Jimmy and Carol Owens called Ansylvania. I did a little voiceover project for them. Oh in, wow, we we've heard that. Oh, is that right? Okay, yeah. cool. So, yeah, and, and I, in working on that project, I met uh, a guy named Chuck Bolte, and he was connected with Adventures in Odyssey. And he asked me on that project if I would be interested in doing any uh, Adventures in Odyssey stuff. And I said, sure. And then uh, I started doing some of that. And when, when I was over there, I was talking to one of their... I don't know who, I can't remember his name now, but they said, hey, do you know any writers? We're really, you know, looking for, no, I don't know any writers. I know the writer. Let me fill in uh, just a couple of things. At that point, Chuck Bolte was probably just playing Mr. Barkley. He probably wasn't even part of Focus at that point. No, 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 that's not accurate, though. <laughs> was he on, <laughs> was he on Focus? He's, no, no, yeah, Chuck, uh, Chuck actually came in as the executive producer of Adventures in Odyssey, uh, fairly quickly after it started, about six to six months to a year after it started. So uh, Odyssey started in '87, and Chuck was the executive producer by at least by '88. Would it have been Steve Harris that Nathan had talked to? No, no. Chuck was still doing uh, Chuck was still doing freelance stuff at that point. He was working on a lot of uh, other stuff, but he was also working on Odyssey. And I, I didn't know that he had met you, Nathan, actually outside of Focus. I thought I thought Jeff actually brought. Nathan to focus. I didn't know that Nathan brought No, it was the other way around. Oh, is that right? Wow. Yeah. See, you learn something new every day. So I gave him, I think I called Jeff and said, hey, can I give him your information? And blah, blah, blah. And so they called him and said, hey, would you come in? And then he got hired on that focus. And uh, that's where he met you, Phil. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we met. And uh, and you had done 
uh, prior to, did you do anything prior to Richard Maxwell? Do you remember, Nathan? I'm actually looking at AIO Wiki right now, and it looks like he was actually in Family Portraits in Memory of Herman. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow. So that's and even then, pretty And then Odyssey. he did uh, um, John Mark and the Imagination Station. Wow. Okay, so wait a minute. Then that, that, that uh, in Memory of Herman, that was the Family Portraits episode and you're right jeff chuck was not working at focus at that point but that was a different it wasn't odyssey it was a, it was the precursor to odyssey which was family portraits so that's uh wow that's really you go way back nathan i didn't know you went that far back farther back than i care to admit yes yeah <laughs> that's right from the beginning so in memory of herman was like the fifth or sixth family portraits episode that we ever did and then uh after that we revamped the series and launched it that was that was in early 87 uh, 86 and 87, actually, when we recorded that and then produced it, it was aired in the beginning of 87, and then we revamped everything and uh, premiered Odyssey, Adventures in Odyssey, in the fall of 87, and then I think Jeff came on, like, next year, 88 or something like that, so. I miss Chuck Bolte. He's still Chuck. Yeah. You ever, you ever talk to him? Oh, yeah, I talked to him a little while back, a couple of, yeah, I see him on Facebook all the time. We talked a little while back. In fact, um, there was something that he and Steve Harris and I did. Uh, oh, it was uh, something for the family portraits thing, is, uh, coincidentally. Um, they, we were talking about the history of it. That was, this was a couple of years ago, actually. They wanted to do something at Focus, and they had Chuck interview Steve and myself, and uh, we, had, we had a good time with it. Chuck was a lot more serious, though, in that interview than, <laughs> than I remembered him being in real life. <laughs> I haven't seen Chuck in so many years. Yeah, he still got the same laugh. That's a good laugh. That's a that's a killer laugh, I can tell you that. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll be going back and forth um on the on Odyssey and Jungle Jam. Um but we're gonna go ahead and ask uh Nathan this question and I'll let you guys ask it. Actually no, yeah, you guys. Who wants to ask this one? Is it have easy words to say? Yes, easy <laughs> words, that first one there. Okay, because I read one that said memorable or something like that, and I was so hoping I wouldn't have to read that one. Okay. When did you decide to be a voiceover actor? Well, uh, that's an interesting question. I had, uh, in, in a high school and one year of uh, college, I was pursuing acting uh, and music. And then I heard about this, uh, this uh, Christian ministry down in Texas that was uh, looking for actors and musicians because they wanted to start to do Christian movies. And I felt led to connect with them and went down there. And when I got there, they weren't quite at the stage where they were doing movies yet, but they were doing children's records. And they said, um, hey, can you do the voice of an owl? And I thought, you know, in, in what I, when I was being trained as an actor, they basically always say, whatever they ask you if you can do, you say yes. And so I said, uh, yeah, sure. Because I was thinking, you know, Chances are they've never heard an owl speak. And so who are they going to be to tell me I'm doing it wrong? So I said, absolutely, I can do an owl. And so I, I did that and, and just kind of created a, a character from, from an acting standpoint in my mind based on what they described to me. And they said, hey, that's great. Would you do this? And would you do that? And do this? And, that? and so I started doing voices. And they go, you're going to be our voice guy. And I'm thinking I was really kind of signing on to be the actor guy but they're not doing that yet so that's where that all started uh and i uh joined that ministry and was with him for about seven years doing kids records and that's also where at the end of that times where i met uh jeff parker cool <coughs> cool okay sorry I, I was gonna redo that take all right cool Oh, so the short answer is when I saw myself on camera, I said, hey, I look like a good voice actor. <laughs> he has a face made for radio. Um, well, I know Nathan won't say this, but I really believe that Nathan has one of the best voices or the most has the most talented or the most talents. I've never heard anybody make as many voices as he does. And so, uh, so different. Um that for the longest time, I couldn't figure them out. There's some people you can really hear their voice and you can recognize it's them, but for the longest time, I could not pick out uh, Nathan's voice and all the stuff he did. It wasn't until, like, years later, like, oh, yeah, that's him. <laughs> you know, I'm on medication now to control that, so I don't quite <laughs> go that far with all those other... But I, occasionally I'll have, a, a, like, on the way home from work, I was just getting crazy in the car and 
kind of warming up my voice and and uh, uh, another personality was starting to peek through and I thought, oh my goodness, who's that? And, uh, <laughs> and then he didn't say anything after that, so I lost him. So. The one that always surprises me, I, and I don't know why this is because I've known it for years, uh, Nathan is the voice of Connie. <laughs> Shh. Oh, boy. Now that's going to be all over the airway. Wow. You let the secret out of the bag there, didn't you? <laughs> well, actually, for the longest time, Nathan, I didn't know that you had voiced Gruffy Bear. And when we interviewed Phil for the first time, he, he just offhandedly mentioned that you played Gruffy. And I was like, wait a minute. It was like a light bulb. And I was like, Nathan plays Gruffy? Yeah. Like, whoa. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And here's the thing about Gruffy Bear with Nathan. He doesn't have to actually do much with his voice. He can do that voice all day long and it not get really, you know. I mean, if I did that, doesn't, my voice would be thrashed by the voice, end of the yeah. session, but not him. Yeah, it's that natural growl I got in the voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on um, to Jeff again. Or we'll start oh, don't on... do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only have you for a little while, so we want to get as much as we can while you're here but just feels like a really long time why don't we talk about more about dates and things let's go let's get everybody get out their calendar <laughs> <laughs> that was really popping when we were doing when we were doing that well we want to know and i don't i don't really know about this either but um talking about another radio show that you guys worked on which is jungle jam so ashley why don't you go ahead and ask jeff this one what was the inspiration of jungle jam well, I guess I guess there had been uh, talking bears before. There was Smokey and Yogi, so that wasn't that original. I, you know, I really, I think I was just looking for a project that uh, that I could continue working with Nathan and Buddy on. Maybe Buddy Davis or not Buddy Davis. Um, I don't even know a Buddy Davis. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was thinking of another singer. But the Buddy's the guy that did the music for Jungle Jam, right? Yeah, Buddy, Buddy and Julie Miller. Yeah. Okay. Um, and, and so, and I had a very, I'm, I'm sure a very limited window, at least in my mind of their availability. And, uh, uh, and so I was, you know, I, 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 literally it was like probably a collection of stuffed animals on a child's bed. And I thought, let's give them all voices and throw them together and see what we can come up with. And, uh, uh I think that was probably about it. That was as, as sophisticated as it got. So I know um, it started as basically like what Nathan uh, worked on, basically like a children's record. Like there was like a musical, almost an hour of Jungle Jam before it was a weekly radio broadcast. So how did how did that come about? How did it make that transition? Austin, you know more about my life than I do at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. Oh, yes, you do. Jeff and I were uh, commissioned to take a uh, an audio record called The Birthday Party and adapt it to a stage musical. And I uh, had, uh, at that point, only been doing voice stuff, and he was hired as a writer. And so we were in, in the room, and I was just kind of ad-libbing and um, kind of getting familiar, getting him familiar with the character, and he goes, oh, that's really great, let's, let's write that down. I said, oh, well, that's not in the script. And he goes, well, it is now. And I went, hey. That's a lot of power. Uh, that's a lot of power. And I immediately was seduced into saying, I really want to be a writer because that's really cool. A big part of that early equation also, though, was, was, was Buddy would produce these demos of his songs, and then they would go and actually go into the studio and record them, and frequently it would go, wow, I really like the demo more than I like the, the actual full orchestrated version of that song. And so, you know, part of what, at least part of my, my inspiration on those albums was how do we capture the magic of what he's doing, you know, in the demo? How do we, how do we get that to, to exist on, on an album? And, and, uh, I think probably, I think probably I paid to do three or four songs or something like that. And then I started shopping it around to various record labels in those days, um, you couldn't get your stuff heard unless you went through one of the major record labels, and uh, and you know I think it was good enough that we we got several several people interested and and we ended up going with Word. In those days. In those days. Now you could now if I were starting again, boy, I would do it completely differently. Now you could you could start a, a record label and and not have any 
system of, of established distribution and be just as successful as anybody else based on the quality of your, your creativity. It's such an amazing time Which now. is really a great way to have it be, actually. It's amazing, I think, that uh, we've gone in our lifetimes from that to where we are now. And, and it's also equally uh, disconcerting that we can actually say in those days about this stuff. <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> that long ago. ago. I know. It wasn't that long ago, but it just seems like in those days, in those way back in those days. Yeah, and it, it was the only way to get things out. We actually had to you know, send, send out strips of plastic tape to people that they would buy over the counter in this thing they used to have called a store. <laughs> it was made out of bricks. Well, that's and way more before Ashley. And, no, uh, we we grew up on on that. Our I we had the first time we heard Jungle Jim was the cassette albums uh, Wild Times and God's Creation. We had never heard of it, um, but my dad he had listened to it when he was a teenager. And we saw it in a Christian bookstore. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> and he and he bought it and he had heard it and <laughs> we just fell in love with it after that. Oh, this is so when cool. his dad was a teenager. Oh, his dad. <laughs> I'm yeah. not for sure if he was a teenager exactly, Austin. I think it was. It was in the what? Oh no, he probably would have been his twenties, twenties probably. Yeah. Hey, I have a question for know. Jeff. Jeff, can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, how did you come up with Jungle Jam as the title? Ooh, good question, Phil. I should have asked you for some more questions. <laughs> it's a great question, and and it's been so long uh, that I that I barely remember. I I. I uh, you know, I think probably it was we were sitting around j literally jamming with Buddy on various kinds of sounds and things, what, what this thing might sound like. And I think that's the, that was the inspiration for it. But I don't, I don't have any, I don't, I, don't have, I, don't, I don't have a vivid recollection of the aha moment. Well, the reason why I ask, one of the reasons why I ask is I kind of ascribe to this theory that there are certain things that are just inherently funny and there are certain words that are inherently funnier than other words. So, um, and, and because you're just the kind of a naturally funny guy, Jungle Jam is a funny, f funny kind of title. Because I worked on another project before, was which which had forest in the title, and I got to thinking about for between the difference between jungle and forest. Jungle is funny, and forest is not. And and it, I I thought that's really kind of interesting. You just have a natural bent toward funniness there. I, I think the harder consonants are, are funny, but again, I think I think it also is is friendly to younger younger kids. I think if you truly went with the you know what were traditionally called the funnier consonants, the harder harder consonants, I'm not sure that would be kid friendly to a you know below eight year old. Maybe maybe not, but I I just always thought that because and it could be you know this would be chicken and egg thing because we made Jungle Jam and it was intentionally funny. Maybe that's. Play that, that pro I'm sure that played into it as well, but because the forest project that I worked on was not funny at all. <laughs> there was nothing even remotely funny about it. Well, and also it alliterates too, so that helps sure, too. Sure, yeah, sure. but if the other one's called you know, Freddy's Forest, it alliterates. There's no magic to alliteration. Okay, I got another question for you, Jeff, and I'm sure you had to had um, a little bit... Uh, By the way, I think, I think the name Little that? Dogs on the Prairie is much funnier. And it doesn't have it doesn't there's not a hard hard consonant in it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> well, another part of Jungle Jam was more like a I'm not sure what would you call it, not a spin off, but it was like a another show within the show, which was Rides of Flavin Island. So the question is, how did you come up with the idea of Rides of Flavin Island? And also who um who played the Snufflesen family? Oh boy. <laughs> it's like a pop <laughs> quiz. Uh, Razzle Flab and Island, I'm sure, was you know one of those things that uh, Nathan and I were toying with because in it, when we did when we first went on the radio, um, we had we had we did a segment for another company called Everland every every fourth episode, and so the other three episodes needed to have something as the other part of it. Now, in hindsight, uh, we, we could have done a lot more one part one part episodes instead of two stories to an episode. Um, but I think we were just sort of looking for other story ideas. And in, in this case, you know, the Jungle Jam was sort of like, you know, what if what if what if all this stuffed animals around your bed came to life and started talking and they all had personalities and they all had conflicts and whatever else? In in Razzle Flabbins, we actually took that one more step and and let you see Marvy really before the dream, and then his room fills up with water, and he goes off to the you know the dreamland, which is which is the island. Um, we never really articulated as that, but that's that's sort of what happens. And I, I think uh, 
I think it was just like, what if we start this one step earlier than where Jungle Jam starts? And what about the actors that played it? Because I know um, Nathan and Phil, Phil played most of the Jungle Jam characters, but the snu- most of the Snufflesons are played by other people, right? Yeah. Um, boy, let me see if I can... I can th- I'm going to forget somebody's name and I'm going to feel terrible. David Buller played uh, the father. Uh, Marvy Carvey Snufflesen... Marvy Harvey Carvey, Carvey Snuffleson Sr. Yeah. Uh, he was actually in the very first episode, he was played by David Lipson. Um, but it was easier to have, have David Bullard do it after that because he was a little more geographically friendly. Uh, Charlie Richard's wife um, played the mother. I can't remember the character name. Can you remember the... I think she was only in Mrs. one episode. It was in a... Oh, um, the what? It was the first uh, radio one where um, he was around Flavin Island, and he met Sven because uh, his mom told him to clean his room. And then he went to his room. Uh huh. I think that's the only time I remember hearing uh, Marvie's mom on the show. And that's Michelle Richardson, but I've forgotten what the character's name was. Was it just Mrs. Snuffleson? I think it was just Mom. Mom, <laughs> that's what I it heard. might have been. I mean, the might script the scripts might have said something, but that's all I remember from the show. And then uh, Marvy was played by Adam Burton, who is the son of uh, actor Wendell, Wendell Burton. And then Michelle, no, Katie, Katie, Mich- Michelle's in a different series. Katie was played by, Michelle is in uh, 321 Penguins. Katie is played by my niece, uh, Katie, who is now a mother with children of her own. Um that was an album too first right red yellow black and plaid before it ever got onto the series before we ever did anything on the series (laughs) yeah that's one of our favorites yeah i think that was an album did the album come first or did the radio show come yeah i'm trying to remember which came first whether it was the album Um, the album i think came first um because that was the like almost an hour with almost like based around music and then we did like the one hour special with like four jungle jam episodes then he had the one where he went to Rosflavin Island again, but for the first time, and he met Sven. Yeah, I, 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 that, that that sounds about right. Yeah, your memory is sharper than mine, but but that, but that sounds about right. Okay, so um, we got a question for Phil now, and I think it's Tasha's turn. So go ahead and ask that one there. Ask away, Tasha. If there's one AIO script you could rewrite, which one would it be? Wow. Um... What are you saying? Are you saying saying that there's an AIO script that I should rewrite? Is that what you're saying? No. Yeah, but just one for the interview. Yeah, they're all of them. You know, all of them. (laughs) Several. I'd rewrite all of them if I could. Right. Yeah, I'm. I'm over here thinking I can't think of a Jungle Jam script I wouldn't rewrite. Yeah. 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 I don't think. I don't think uh, when you when you when you do a lot of writing and uh, especially I think if you make a living at writing, you you there's not they're never really finished. You could rewrite them all. I mean, there's, I, I, I can't think of a script that I wouldn't rewrite. I think eventually what happens, Austin, is uh, uh, it, it just the deadline comes and it's time to record. Yeah, we, we just had to. And, we, and, you know, this is interesting. For in Jungle Jam, we were writing all of it as we were doing it. I mean, we would finish a script. Yeah, we'd have the script in our hands. But if, if somebody had a better line or if we were reworking, we were reworking things even as we were recording them. So uh, and and then even sometimes in post you'd go in and redo a line or redo a little section of something because it just you know wasn't working wasn't as funny, so the 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 writing was ongoing all I mean it was it was continuous so um, yeah to, I mean to answer that question I you, you kind of have to give a cutoff point it's I think this is the way it is with most um, most of the disciplines in this field you you know the production people would say the same thing I mean good goodness knows David Bowler would have tweaked forever on everything if we let him. So after a while, you just have to say, okay, this is it. We're done, and we're, we're moving on. So, and, then, and then you live with the results, <laughs> and hopefully they're good. And um, this, this question here is for Nathan as well. Do you know that Richard Maxwell was actually blacker before you recorded I Slap 4, or was it a surprise? Uh, wow. I did not know before this interview. <laughs> I'm not sure if to take you seriously or not. <laughs> I should have pre- prefaced at the beginning of, of the interview. Please take everything I say with a grain of salt. 
Uh, I did not know before the, uh, I don't believe I knew before the script was given to me that we were going to record. Um, and usually I got the, I don't remember if I even ever got the script before. We no, had no. Yeah. You never did studio. before that. At that yeah. point you came, you came to the studio, we gave you the script and we just read through it the first time. Yeah. Now we kind of give things in advance, but no, then we just relied on you being as talented as you are. Okay. Thank you, Phil. Hey, but let me ask you, Phil, um, when was that decision even made about the, about the Well, that that's that particular script, of course, is uh, about uh, April Fool's and the April Fool's Day. And I think Marshall Younger wrote that script. But, I mean, the character Richard Maxwell was created before that that decision. Oh, that, yeah, 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 a long time before that. Uh, yeah. You know, that, that was... That was done a long, long time before that. So, so someone actually said, "Hey, wait a minute. Why don't we make? Why don't we do that?" Yeah, but it was all, you know, it was all just a, a nice, fun, April Fool's joke, more than anything else. And so it, we were just trying to figure out how goof, how crazy we could make that particular episode. And and so that's that's how that sort of came about. But yeah, the, yeah, I I really think you know the, actually the more interesting thing is that what we were just talking about is that in those days you guys would come to the studio and have no inkling as to what you were going to do <laughs> um, because we would just hand you the script right there and then right. read through it a couple of times and then we're off to the races. So, um, and, and it really is a tribute to how talented, I mean, I was, you know, not, not really joking. I was it really as a tribute to how talented you guys are um, that all of you, I mean, everybody from Hal Smith all the way, you know, down to, anybody um, who we brought in could pick up on stuff like that and do it in a heartbeat, just really easy. Um, and, uh, and I think it was, it was the fact that you knew the characters really well, but also could bring so much to the script itself as we were going along. So, so were you surprised Nathan when that happened? I mean, did it really shock you? Like, Oh, I'm actually the bad guy <laughs> or actually somebody else. Uh, yeah, it was, I think, I mean, I, it's been a while, so I don't remember exactly how, but I know that I, I do remember being, uh, surprised and, and delightfully surprised because of course, as an actor, you, you like as much, uh, complexity and, and, you know, interesting stuff that you can sort of sink your teeth into as much as possible. So when they threw that out there, I was like, cool. Okay. What, okay. you know, that, what's great about that too, also, is that, that though, all, all that, the, the stuff where Blackard, where where Richard Maxwell was Blackard and all that stuff. You, when when you guys did those scenes, it was two of my favorite actors doing those scenes, Nathan Carlson and Earl Bowen. Wow, how can you how can you get any better than that in this? Now you just you go, wow, that's just fantastic. I look back on a lot of that now, and at the time I was like, what an idiot I was to not realize what was going on in the studio. I was so <laughs> I was so intent on doing the work that it never occurred to me that look at this, this is. This is amazing. We've got Dave Madden, and we've got Hal Smith, and we've got Walker Ebison, and we've got Earl Bowen, and we've got all of these great – at Parley Bear, and we've got – and Nathan Carlson. We've got all of these great actors in the studio, and I'm not really even sitting back and enjoying it because I'm so busy working. Yeah. Well, I would just say I was uh, greatly humbled and honored to be with that cast. That was, a, that was a blast for me. And, you know, how it really does make a huge difference for an actor – who he's playing off of. And those guys just make, you know, they make you better. They make you sound great. And, and that was a, that was such an enormous uh, uh, pleasure and fun for me to be working with those guys. Um, moving on to another question for Jeff. Have you played any characters on Jungle Jam? I don't think I did. Yes, you did. I played uh, uh, a character on Little Dogs in the Prairie. I'm Tom Trail Mix. But I don't remember playing anything on Jungle Jam. I mean, background, uh, background voices and miscellaneous noise, but I don't think anything that would ever stand out. You were a very funny part of um, of one of the Razzle Flavin scripts. Right. That's what I was thinking, Razzle Flavin. Eat cake, eat cake, eat cake. Yeah, eat cake. You were Mr. Eat Cake. But I'm, but I'm just in the group. It's not, uh, there's a bunch of them. But it was a good group. But you had individual lines in there. Well, I, I don't remember hearing your voice in it, but I was wondering, uh, maybe I just I just didn't pick it up. Yeah, the character I'm known for most on Jungle Jam is uh, Razzle Flab and Voice in Background. <laughs> and who can forget that guy? Okay, and Ashley, another question for Jeff? Is it true that you're working on a new episode of Jungle Jam? Well, there is another episode of Jungle Jam that's in David's computer. 
that actually uh, uh, he has to finish editing someday, and it actually is a is a pretty good one. Uh, it's actually it's actually two episodes. So is um, do you know when we may be able to finally hear those episodes? I have I have uh, I have no idea actually. I uh, I know David said he was. I, I spoke with David uh, a couple of days ago, and I know he said he was he was, had just reopened those files and was looking at them. He got busy doing other things. He. Is a very a very sought over uh, editor over at uh, Fox Broadcasting for all the promotions and things, um, but he said he was uh, he was looking at that the other day. So I don't I don't have a, a, a you know any any sense of what how quickly he'll get back to it and complete it. But uh, so there's there's two more episodes there, and then I, I would actually uh, although I I haven't uh, um, you know I had a chance to really figure out how I, w- I would fit it in my life. I would actually like to do new episodes. I uh I had an awful lot of fun on those uh, in in those doing those episodes the the first one. Said it was a highlight of my life, I can tell you that. Yeah, I never uh laughed uh as hard and as often as I did uh with uh with that show. That was that was uh just amazing. And I've always said that uh, next to me no one makes me laugh more than Jeffrey Robert Parker. But that's not true. <laughs> Well, you can't say that. It's me saying it about me. But I've been with you when you're with other people who make you laugh much harder. Oh, that's <laughs> fake. <laughs> that's true. He's a good actor. I'm just laughing to be polite. Uh, I, 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 I do remember laughing very hard. I, I, I was involved in you know doing all sorts of other business stuff at the time, so I was not, uh, uh, you know, I was not able to focus as much on it as I would be able to focus on it now. Um, but so it would be a lot. It would be a lot of fun for me to get to go and just uh, get to just enjoy the laughter, the laughter part of it. Yeah. I do have a story idea that I'm working on, and I've been working on it for the last several years. <laughs> I got I got lots of story ideas. I just I, I would have to you know take the time to scribble them on paper. And that was kind of how how it went. Jeff would have nine story ideas. I would have half of one. And it would take me, you know, months to figure out what happens in the story. And then Jeff would go, okay, well, I've got six that I'd like to finish if you... That's not true. You know, that's kind of... The... There's portions of truth in that. Nathan and Phil Nathan and Phil made uh, made everything much, much funnier than it was otherwise. Their, their performance really makes those scripts shine. Bless your heart. It's, it's a... You know what? It's a really... Um, it, it's a really great collaboration. I think it, it, it was a unique thing that we had, and um, and and what's interesting about it is we still we uh, we we can do it again. I think whenever we kind of meet together, <laughs> you know, we, we did a Christmas show a couple of years ago, uh, years back, and it was just as much fun doing that as it was doing everything the years before we did that. You know, so it. I mean, there were some technical problems with that Christmas show, but I still had a blast doing it. Just doing yeah, the voices, doing the stuff, getting everybody together again. And we do, we still laughed. It was great. Well, I know Jeff's going to have to leave here a little bit, so I have another question for him. Um, and I, this is one of my this is one of the questions I was wanting to have answered the most, and that's you actually appeared in another radio drama as yourself called The Pond. How did that come about? Uh, Charlie was starting uh, his his radio show, the, the Pond, and uh, just asked if I'd be in it, and I, you know, it was I don't, it's just a few lines. I don't think it was much. I didn't I didn't star I didn't star in the Pond. He was a guest star. Well, okay, <laughs> <laughs> a guest star who no no one knew who I was, no one knew why I was there. It was it was just uh, it was a funny like inside joke. Well, we we knew as soon as I heard it, it's like. I never, I didn't recognize your voice a whole lot, but I recognized the name and like, oh wow, that's cool. I actually get to hear what he sounds like. You already heard him, remember? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, subconsciously, I heard him. I love how Jeff is. He's, you know, Austin's saying this was really a, the question that I really wanted to ask Jeff for a long time, and I put a lot of thought into this question. This is really, really something I want to ask. So, how did you end up on the pond? And Jeff's like, "Well, somebody just asked me." Because <laughs> Charlie wanted by. me on it. I, I don't have a better answer than that. I, I was as a friend of Charlie's, and he just sort of asked me. So uh, I was and am a friend of Charlie. And put Charlie on the list with Chuck Bolte. I haven't talked to talked to Charlie in way too long. I had a weird thing happen with Charlie the other day. Uh, kind of a weird connection because I do a, I do one of the voices on Tom and Jerry now, um, just uh, 
kind of a re- small recurring character. And I saw that Charlie has submitted some scripts for Tom and Jerry. In fact, I, cool. I was in one of the ones that he was in, that he wrote. So that's fantastic. Good for Charlie. Tom and Jerry, the uh, is this Daryl Van Sitter's thing? Or is this yeah, yeah the, the, the New Adventures of Tom and Jerry. Is this a Warner Brothers project? Yeah. Yeah, we record over at the ranch all the time. It's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Say hi to Daryl and, and uh, Ash. I, I, you know, I mentioned you. I, I actually tell them about you all the time. They ask about you, and I tell them about you. If you call them up, you could probably get on one of the shows. Did you say you record at the Warner Brothers Ranch or at Radio Ranch? No, at the Warner Brothers Ranch, at the Warner Ranch. Oh, okay. over in, in um, hey, tell Studio hey, tell them to uh, give me a call because uh, I think, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind talking to them and maybe working on something if they, if they have anything for me. That'd be fun. Yeah, if you got time, I'm sure they'd love to use you. Well, I never have time. But <laughs> well, make time, I'm... dude. It's, you know, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, please. Actually, um, Nathan, were you in that pond episode, too? Because I know, Jeff, you came in, like, at the end and said, Hey, Charlie, Nathan and I are going to go grab a bite. You want to come? And there's, like, a line where uh, Nathan, someone, the person named Nathan says, he says he's going to write. Is that Was that you, Nathan, or was that somebody else? Uh, I don't recall, but I don't know that anyone else named Nathan would have been in that circle. Yeah, we, we wouldn't have had another actor play his voice. Jeff, are you cheating on Nathan? With another Nathan? <laughs> Especially with someone else named Nathan. I'm, I'm <laughs> acting with another Nathan, that's true. <laughs> wow. It's, it was so brief, I can't. I couldn't tell if it was him or not, but since it was, you know, talking about Jungle Jam, I wasn't sure if it, Nathan was on what, it. What are, what are the lines? What, is, what, is, um, what do we say? Okay, you know, he, uh, Charlie, Charlie, the pawn characters come to him, and he talks like it's bad writing. And uh, when they finally convince him, Jeff, you come in and said, "Hey, Charlie, Nathan, and I are going to go grab a bite. You want to come with us?" And then he said, "Um." And then Methuselah interrupts him, like, "Sorry, I got to do some writing, or I have some writing to do." And then uh, Jeff uh, says, "Okay, catch you later." And Nathan says, uh, um, "Says he's going to write." And Jeff, and Jeff, you say, "We'll see." And so it's really brief there. So I wasn't sure if that was Nathan there or not. It, it had to be. There's, there's no way. I can't imagine yeah. it wasn't. Me. I, we recorded those wild. We recorded those stu- those lines wild in my studio. We didn't. We we literally like didn't even do the interaction. The other the other side of the voices are done. We're done somewhere else. Much much as what what's going on now <laughs> with everybody being in completely different locations. You know, yeah. when people find out how this really works, it's 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 kind of it's either really fascinating or really like, oh, you mean you're not all together like in a basement all the time just waiting to do these shows? No, <laughs> no, we're all over the place and a lot of stuff happens so i'm constantly down in the basement working that's on something different though <laughs> you're, you're burying things down there aren't you well no it's concrete there's no there's no burying things <laughs> <laughs> all right i think tasha has another question for nathan here would you like to see the return of richard maxwell and we sure would we'll go on the record and say that we would love wow. to see richard maxwell come back on the show well, I I wouldn't say no. Probably I'd uh, I'd be all right. I'd be. Uh, he's probably going to sound a little older. Well, you, you can change your voice. I I know you can can do that. You're talented. Well, most people grow up on Odyssey, except for like Connie and. You know, most of the teenagers stay the same. You know, Connie and Rodney and Jimmy for a long time. So I'm sure Richard could stay the same age for a long time. All right. Yeah, I'd be into it. I'd love that. Didn't you play another character after Richard though, for a while, Nathan? I don't, you know, I don't, I, I may have, I, I know that there was other, I don't know if they were Odyssey shows, there was other shows that I did, and there was, um, there was some series that, that, uh, oh, I had the CD here on my desk for the longest time. Yeah, um, it's actually, um, Steven Strasberg, you played him for, oh, uh, oh, um, Mandy's dad. Later part. Yeah, you shouldn't ask me that, Phil, you should ask Austin, he's, <laughs> he's really, he knows more, more about, about my life. So... Actually, I'm writing. I'm actually writing an unauthorized biography, and no, not really. Yeah, well, I'll go ahead and authorize it because I'm sure it's more accurate than I, anything I can come up with. <laughs> um, there's a sh- there was a thing that I did uh, not too long ago. It was a really cool, uh, um, you know, radio thing or audio book or something like that. And I can't was it remember. Lamplighter Theater? Yeah, yeah, Lamplighter. Uh, buried in the snow. Yeah, <laughs> why do I struggle to even? Ask? I should just ask Austin. <laughs> Austin, what was that wow. thing I did? Yeah, that was really cool. I, I really had a good time with that. Give me some some uh, opportunities for good acting moments. That was really fun. So you were Mr. Strasberg? He actually, actually, I I was looking this up a while back. Um, he was actually the first actor to play Stephen back in Tornado. 
But after that, there's like two or three other people that played him, and then he came back to voice him in uh, Now More Than Ever when that whole uh, Strasburg family uh, separation started. So he was the first one to play it, and a few other people played him, and then Nathan came back and he voiced, voiced him in his last episodes. Well, actually, um, Nathan, you actually played Lucy's dad actually before Richard Maxwell. It was in uh, Choices. I think it sounds familiar. But that would be again a, a question for Austin. <laughs> I used to keep a, I used to keep a detailed calendar. Now I'm just going to ask Austin what I have on schedule. I know, <laughs> me too. It's kind of impressive. Austin, it's funny how you can remember all this wow. but you forget other stuff about your sisters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is true. How old are you again? Ninety one. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> so you know, Phil, you're writing on the show now. So yeah, you could bring Richard Maxwell back. Oh uh, well, we'll see. You're writing on the show. Yeah. Oh. Back for about a couple of years now. I didn't know that. Austin knows. <laughs> Congratulations, Phil. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's been fun. It's been it's been good. Well, actually, that's a perfect segue for another question for Phil, and I think it's Tasha's turn. I'm actually going to have to step out, unfortunately. So I'm going to what I'm going to do is just mute this microphone, and I will keep listening to you while I get ready to bolt out the door, and. Uh, Nice chatting with you all. Very nice meeting you, uh, Ashley and Tasha. You too. Me too. Yeah, it's been fun. We'll chat again soon. All right. Anyway, back to the perfect segue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Tasha. That one right there. Okay. So make sure you can read that word, Tasha. Which one? Favorite? No, it's <laughs> right here. It's Four? called Ford. Oh, okay. It's got three It's letters. a three-letter word. Okay, I'll spell it correctly. F-O-R. All right, I got it. All right. Or F-O-U-R. Be quiet. Or F-O-R-E. You better stop before you get it. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) What has been your favorite script you've written for Odyssey since your return? Oh, my goodness. Um, The next one. (laughs) Yeah, the one he's working on. Yeah, the one I'm working on right now. Um, Let's see. I think I've done... I think I've done maybe ten or I'm looking. 12. I'm looking right now. I don't know off the top of my head. Don't surprisingly. Know. I don't know how many I've done since I've been back. Um, I, let's I'm, see. I'm thinking I've done... I wrote one with Marshall. I know that. And then I wrote... I think I've written... Yeah, Follow, follow Me, I think, was the one that you were talking about. Yeah. And then BTV, To Tell the Truth, A Daughter's Love, The Good Soil, Things Not Seen, The Boat People, and the upcoming... Uh, Album 62 episodes. Yeah, yeah. So it's been close to 10 episodes, 10, 10 episodes. Um, boy, uh, I, there's a new character called Renee, and I really like her. She was just introduced last month um, on the club side of things. So sorry if people can't, if you don't have the club, you got to get the club to hear Renee. Yeah. And I really like that. Uh, she was, she was a, she's a good character. I really like her. Um, that was a good episode. Um you know, again, it's really hard for me to talk about my favorites because I like them all. I mean, I, I wouldn't be working on them if I didn't like them. So they're they're <laughs> they're. I, I've had a good time working with all of them. I do have. I can tell you this. Uh, there's an episode, a, a two parter coming up that I really uh, enjoyed working on a lot, and um, it's called Legacy, and it's a musical. And I'll tell you that much right now. And we've had some really, we had a great recording session with it. And I heard the rough cut of it um, two days ago, yesterday actually, heard the rough cut of it. And uh, it was it was too long. I had to cut it down. But the uh, the music is fantastic. It's um, it's a lot of fun. And um, the recording and uh, the people who are in it and the, the, the humor is uh, very Jungle Jammy-esque, <laughs> if I can say that. Um, and it's, and it deals with stuff that's happened in the past and it deals with stuff that's going on into the future and certain, um, things about Odyssey itself that we wanted to try to continue on and just continue on in a new way. So, uh, looking forward to that one. Um, probably it's not going to air until next year at this point, but, uh, that's a, that's a very fun one. And so it's a two-parter called Legacy. Just remember that one. Yeah. I'm I'm really excited for album sixty two one because you wrote most of the episodes in it, but also that musical one, and also because next year's the thirtieth anniversary, so I'm really excited to hear those. Yeah, thirty years. That's uh, that's a long time. 
Yeah, boy, 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> it's been 20, I guess, since Jungle Jam, since we started doing that, isn't it? Or 93. Wow, wow. 2003, so that's 2003 2013, 20 years. 23 20 years, something. yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. You feel old, Nathan? Uh, some days I feel older than others, but, uh, and I just, you know, I, I feel old, but I still feel immature. So I think I'm hanging on to that. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember, do you remember Nathan when we were in the recording studio? Right? We just get the feeling that, that somebody's going to walk through the door and tap us on the shoulder and say, you know, the jig is up guys. We, we just been... We've been letting you play with the studio, but now the adults need to take over. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember that? We had that conversation. Yeah, it was yeah. like, we feel like such yeah, frauds we had, here. We, I think we, uh, we perpetually had the feeling of, I can't believe we're getting away with this. Exactly. They're exactly. actually putting us on the air. Ah. We do all this stuff, and we think, like, are the, are the real adults, the real yeah. people are going to come in soon, yeah, yeah. right? They're going to do that, because they've just been letting us play with this stuff from, from, <laughs> from, from before now. Well, I wish I could have uh, had um, asked Jeff about this too, but we can get this from you guys. Sure, we'll answer for Jeff. We're happy to speak on behalf of Jeff, and if we don't know, we'll simply make it up. We don't have to make it up because Austin will know the answer. <laughs> yeah, Austin, really, you'll know the answer, so you could call us on it. Uh, I doubt that. <laughs> could you share some of your favorite or most memorable moments working together, either in AIO or Jungle Jam? And who's that question for? That's for both. Is that of for you. Jeff? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, Jeff too. If he was here, well, he kind of is. He's he's here in spirit. <laughs> my my most vivid memory, and this was something that I've always um, I thought was a lot of fun as well. We, you know, you you commented on the blanket fort that I have. Um, that's how we recorded Jungle Jam too, but it was a literally a frame on which we hung blankets, um, big thick blankets like the one you see behind me, and. Um, <laughs> and then we had one microphone, and Nathan was always in front, and I was always behind him. <laughs> now, let me just say that was primarily because the power of projection of Phil's voice was like a thousand times more than mine, and that's why I had to be closer. Yeah, I, I, I had to be farther away from the mic, and Millard always cut through, and everything else always cut through much more than Nathan, who had a far more pleasing voice than mine. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, but I just remember us laughing so much. I mean, there was moment after moment after moment where um, I, one that springs to mind is what we were just talking about the episode where um, the monsters in Rabble Flab, Razzle Flab and Island were going to eat Katie. Um, and I think something happened. I don't remember what it was. And uh, there was a moment in the script where we were all being puzzled. We're supposed to be these monsters and we're all being puzzled. And we looked at each other, and I said something to the effect of, thought made self clear. And everybody, and Jeff. Oh, right, right. right. Thought made self clear was not in the script. And so we fell over laughing at that. Oh, we were in tears, from what I recall. And that was, and you were, you know, this question, I didn't have a specific moment that I could think of as, as, as well as Phil there. But I do remember having moments like that one where we literally were in pain. We were laughing so hard. And, you know, just to, just saying right now, hey, thought made itself clear. That's not going to make anybody who hears the interview laugh in pain. You have to be in that moment. And you have to be reading the script and realizing the, 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 the lunacy of these characters and what we're doing. And all the while going, we're never going to get away with this. And, and then having the, the script was really fun primarily because... It gave us something in our minds that we're, quote unquote, supposed to do so that we could stray from that as as radically and sarcastically as possible to shock one another while we're recording. Because, you know, you have this tension of, OK, we're on, we're recording. So do the script. And then you just say something that that is is outrageous. And then it totally breaks everybody up. But that's then, you know, that's what goes that's what that's what really makes the moment alive for us. I remember a couple of times, Nathan, that you were you you did stuff. For instance, uh, there was one where Jean Claude the Flying Squirrel was singing the French national anthem, and Sully, you had <laughs> you had Sully try to sing it too, and Sully couldn't. 
because <laughs> it was in the script where Sully would actually sing the national anthem or friend, the friend, the French, you know, the Marseillaise. And, and yeah. you, it, you were like, uh, with in Sully's voice, and I tried to do the French accent. <laughs> it was hilarious. Oh, we fell over laughing at that. Uh, I remember also <laughs> just in the writing, uh, we we wrote a lot of stuff at a place that no longer exists called Crocodile Cafe in Glendale, and then we did we'd go down the street to a little coffee shop and we'd sit out in front of the coffee shop and have coffee and write the rest of the time. And I remember those two. Th- Nathan, that's where Nathan would just come up with line after line after line that was hilarious, just so funny. We just kind of had a basic framework for the story, and then we'd go through it again to to do the rewriting and punch up with jokes, and Nathan was just on fire. Every, it's like every single <laughs> every single script was like every, every – <laughs> and Nathan would say something, and Jeff would start laughing, and then Jeff would say something, and, and then and then pretty soon all we were doing nothing but laugh the whole time. Yeah, it's yeah. when you get you get each other going, you know, in a, in a certain vibe, and then your mind just goes wild with the next one, the next level, the next level, the next level, and then you know before you know it, people are looking at us going, okay, somebody needs to put these guys back in their padded cells. But boy, did we have uh, wild times! And I have to say, there was a volume of absolute insane hilarity that actually didn't end up making it on the air some of it because we just didn't have time uh for to fit all of it and others of it was out of context let me just say it that way but uh but it was uh man oh man that was like we said in the beginning of the interview this is it was one of the highlights if not the highlight and the funnest funnest times in our life there was a line on uh, little dogs on the prairie and I remember vividly we were writing this script and we were coming up with stuff. And, feel, you know, there's times when, when we're, we're, like we just said, we're kind of in a vibe and we're the, the skill set that we have or whatever, we're, we're really feeling, we're feeling the flow and we're coming up with funny things. Then there's other times where it's sort of hit and miss and then we'll just sort of get into a groove and someone will say something one line that will absolutely put us on the floor and literally in tears. And, and, th- and this was uh, something that Phil said in one of the, uh, it, it was a, his, uh, the rickety character, and I can't remember what it is, in The Little Dogs. Uh, which one, the Hollister or? No, the other one. Um, Patterson? Cinemia. Cinemia. Austin, can, help us out here. Actually, I'm at a loss for words because I've actually never seen any of them. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. You have a whole experience. Um, so this character, and I can't remember the specific line, but just something about you sure saw me seeing you coming, or something like that. And it was just, I was, <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness! <laughs> it's like you could hear the bat hit the ball in the cherry spot, and it was out of the park. And I was on the floor. It was so, it was such a beautiful, yeah, the timing <laughs> and the wording and the delivery was was just phenomenal. Oh, I'll God, never forget, forget that. that. Uh, the, that 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 was another project, the Little Dogs, where we just laughed so much during. I did, I'm amazed we got any work done because we were just laughing the whole time. Um, at, at Gilroy, uh, Gil Sport has a girlfriend. Sport has a girlfriend is still my favorite thing. Yeah, was, that was a really crazy fun episode. Austin, you got to check out Little Dogs on the Prairie. I'm gonna have to after this. Yeah, Little Dogs on the Prairie. When Hollister when Hollister says. I hope. What was that he said with the with the snake, um, uh, where he talks about? I hope you're all feeling. I hope you're all feeling bad about that, or I hope you're all feeling. I hope you're all. Uh, they we we'd, all the characters had run the snake out of town, and, and and Hollister said something to the effect of, "I hope you're all happy with yourselves." I know I. <laughs> <laughs> And that one, I think, was a total ad lib. I then, think so. I think it was thing. just right at the last minute we said that. <laughs> that was something I think Jeff punched in on at the Probably. moment. Probably. I don't know. Because I was oh, really trying to be yeah. very serious with it because we just made this character feel so bad and ran him out of town. And I hope you're all, I hope you're all feeling happy with yourselves. Okay, so the, yeah, the premise is Hollister is the owner of this grocery store. And um, the... Uh, I don't remember why it was that they're all going to stock up because because he was going to have to shut the store down or something or he was going to sell out. I can't remember what it was. So all the characters um, decide that, oh, man, we got to stock up. And so they go and they buy everything in the store 
and and for whatever reason there was some prejudice the whole premise of the story is prejudice so they run this and the snake just leaves town the snake is actually the, a, a, the, the good character and he has this operatic voice and all this and so he leaves because he feels like he's, he's rejected and, and everything and so it, it, Hollister the grocery store owner is like is making millions now because his store is completely cleaned out and so he's rebuking them saying I you know uh, uh, the fact that they've run the snake out of town and he's saying I hope you're all happy with yourselves I know I am because he's like counting the money it was just such a great counter uh, whatever you call that it was just the, it was just the one what, what was great about that and this was this is really more uh, this is Nathan and Jeff I gotta say um, you know my my bit was always towards saying okay we got to make sure that the lesson is clear we got to make sure the structure is all really well and good and everything like that but what was and they they were very much a part of that, you know. That was an emphasis for them too. But the, the the great thing with Nathan and Jeff especially was the idea that yes, but we don't let the seriousness go on too long. So even <laughs> when we have a serious moment, even when we have a really serious teachable moment, we got to throw the joke in. <laughs> we got to yeah. we got to have the line that gets us out on a laugh. Always get us out on the laugh. And that was yeah. just so, oh, I know that was another one talking a bucket ending. That we that became a thing for us the talk in a bucket ending. Oh um, yeah, for us too. That, I love that. That was like a new form of comedy. We were we're charting down a path. <laughs> we're going, we're headed toward a certain direction. We got all these funny funny lines and everything. And <laughs> and then was it nozzles? I think it was. Hey hey fella, <laughs> do nozzles where you talk in a bucket. It was so funny. That yeah, was just, that was crazy. That was another one. Right? Um, the the grandfather was another one. Your your grandfather voice was hilarious. Oh oh, and that was another one when we're when we're. <laughs> When, when um, Millard and Sully are under the table uh, with the phone call. <laughs> it's, oh, right, right. In the in the scary one or whatever, right? Dial in for Monkey. What was, what, what was it? You're, you're something? And then, and then Sully would say, your phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's, uh, we, they were trying to figure out who was the one that has to go deal with, uh, who go has to answer the door, I think, or something, right? Right, 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 right. Austin can tell us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Yeah, going back to that talk in the bucket thing, we've done that a lot. And we were, went camping or went a picnic somewhere, and then we went to this bathroom, and it echoed in there when you talked, and it was so perfect. I was like, this is like talking the like it's talking the bucket day, and so I just start. I met my family was outside, so I was like, thank you all for the food, and we did have you a little <laughs> to the seven. Like, oh, it's perfect. <laughs> awesome. Anything we could do. Yeah, I, you know the the real sad. The only the only the only sad thing about Jungle Jam was that it just didn't get more exposure. I wish it had. We I think we all of course wish that, but it just wish it had more of a more of a more exposure. And little dog, yeah, Nathan's right. Austin, you got to get you got to get little dogs. You got to get them because you'll you'll have a, a blast because they're so much fun. Right. Okay. Um, another question here for Nathan, and I think it's my turn. Who is your favorite character that you played on either Adventures in Odyssey and or Jungle Jam? Uh, that should be easier. It's not like your favorite episode or anything. <laughs> I was the favorite. Uh, yeah. So I, well, I had prepared for the favorite episode, <laughs> but the ca favorite character. You know, I can't. I, I do in enjoy uh the, the three main ones that i do on on jungle jam are gruffy and uh oh wait four main ones gruffy nozzles uh racket and sully and um there's there's so many times where you know where i'm kind of getting into the character and i'm i'm either trying to think of a story or i'm i'm kind of doing a scene in my mind and i will crack myself up like I was saying earlier, no makes next to me, no one makes me laugh more than, you know, I I have to say, there are times where my wife will look at me and says, "What, what are you laughing at?" <laughs> and and I, I have to tell her I can't really explain it because it won't be that funny to you, but I am dying. This is whole literally, I'm laughing. There's tears coming out of my eyes, and I have to kind of go and hide away <laughs> in the other room because I've just imagined this scene with you know a character saying this or that to to the other character or usually to Millard. Um, yeah. And so, I, you know, I don't, there's probably Sully would be one of the, cause Sully had, had this really fun competitive vibe with Millard. And so Sully was able to get into that uh, a lot more often. So maybe I would say uh, Sully was, 
was one of my favorites. And, uh, and Adventures in Odyssey, well, I think that the one character that I did most uh, episodes of was Richard Maxwell, so I'd probably have to say, you know, that was kind of cool. And it's always, as, a, as an actor, it's, it's, you know, it's more uh, challenging sometimes, more interesting, more fun to play the, the villain of the, sh- of the story than the, than the hero. Uh, so that's always uh, more colorful, and so that was really fun. Yeah. <clears throat> Another one of my fa- uh, other favorite uh, characters he did on Odyssey was uh, um, Judah on Benjamin or not Benjamin uh, Back to Bethlehem. Oh yeah, I've been yeah. listening to that several <laughs> times, and I know uh, other people they really like like that too. And that's probably one of, in my mind, one of your standout roles on Odyssey besides uh, Richard Maxwell. Oh, fun! Thank you. And also uh, going back to like having to uh, go by yourself and until you stop laughing. Oh. Um, Actually, Phil, I don't know if I ever told you this, but when we first interviewed you, um, we were talking about Jungle Jam. I can't remember what it was, but all of us, we just, I'm not sure if you were laughing too, but you're talking and it was just, what you're saying was so funny. Oh. We could, me and Tasha, we could not contain our laughter. <laughs> and so each of us would take, tur- we, one of us would go out and I tried to mute the microphone <laughs> and was laughing outside the hallway, trying to control ourselves. And I had it. And I think I probably did it too. It's like, oh, but I knew you were still talking, but we didn't want to interrupt you or anything like that. So we've you can gotten totally better. Relate. We've gotten better now. We fi- we figured out how to use mute buttons. <laughs> it's a handy tool. Where's that mute? Well, that's fine. Good. I'm glad to know I was so amusing to you that you had to actually leave the room. Yes. <laughs> Because we couldn't control our, control our laughter, and we didn't want to interrupt it. I, I don't know if I thought about having the mute button or not. Well, there's okay, there's uh, nothing there's nothing I enjoy yeah. more than you know trying to be funny and hearing no response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that laugh track isn't can't always be there. I guess. <laughs> okay, Tasha. Um, why don't you ask Phil this one here? I've gotten Tasha yeah, yeah. today. Ta- Tasha, you are my interviewer today. <laughs> I I haven't been keeping track really. <laughs> I'm just reading whatever he points out while well, trying to. What is that word? word? It's arcs. 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 I thought that was geometry. Is <laughs> it Noah or is it arcs as in geometry? Don't bring that up, please. <laughs> Sorry, Ashley. Are there any big story arcs like Blackguard and the Novacom saga in the works? For Adventures in Odyssey. Um, that's a good question. Um, there is. Um. I, I don't think there's anything that with that level of intrigue as a story arc coming up. Uh, but there are things that um, there are story arcs that need to be that have been in the works that needed to be tied up um, and kind of finished. And so those things are coming down the pike and they're kind of leading to other things. I don't think we have anything that is like like that um, planned for a while. Uh, it's not that we're not going to ever do those again, but but just uh, right now we're we're sort of really s- kind of re uh, introducing a few new characters and getting to know them before we get into a, a, a long going an ongoing story arc. Um, so so there's there's nothing that's so planned like that yet, but you know you never can tell. That's a very that's a very Paul McCusker answer. <laughs> I remember when they interviewed him on the official podcast, he was like the most tight-lipped of anybody. Well, I guess you were a little little more talkative than Paul, but they'd always say that Paul would hardly say anything, and Dave would, well, that's Dave would say a little bit to more. Him, you know, to... <laughs> if I tell you, you won't want to listen, so you got to listen now. It won't be a surprise. Okay, here's another one for Nathan. How did you come to work on Witnesses? And just in case somebody doesn't know, um, Witnesses is a... A uh, dramatic audio series that Tracy Lynn Holland, who you may know from Adventures in Editing, it's a YouTube channel that where she acts out scenes from Adventures in Odyssey, and she's dramatizing different events from the Bible from the people's perspective that uh, um, uh, witnessed uh, Jesus and his miracles. Sorry, I totally preempted your answer there, Nathan. Sorry. <laughs> No, I was I was actually going to just say that's a question for Austin. Because, uh, <laughs> he certainly remembers my conversations with Tracy better than I do. Um, yeah, I I don't know how she, I can't remember how she found me. Um, I can tell you that if you'd like. 
Oh, do you? Oh, was that through you, Phil? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. I never got a chance to talk to you about that. Yeah, the uh, the I did the first one for her, the very very first one that she ever did, and then she was wondering about uh, who else I knew who might be interested in doing this, and so I gave I think I gave her your information. Oh, cool. And so I think you know because she was she's actually on uh, she actually plays uh, one of the the female lead in my series Iliad House that I'm getting ready to finish up here. Oh, cool. Um, and so we were doing stuff back and forth, and I was talking to her, and she said I have this series in mind that I'd like to do, and it's called Witnesses. Would you do it? Uh, for me, the first one, and then I said, "Yeah, sure, that wouldn't be a problem." I mean, in, in trade off, you know, and everything. This is how that's a lot of how this also works. And so I did the first one for her, and then she wanted to find out who else she could get. And I mentioned, you know, Nathan Carlson is a very, very talented. You know, well, of course, I know who Nathan Carlson is, but how can I get in touch with him? Well, I just happen to have. Him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm thinking of you, Nathan. I appreciate that, Phil. Uh, you thinking of me has been responsible for a great deal of the work in my. In my repertoire that Austin could recite to you. <laughs> yeah, so I, I really love the the witnesses uh, premise. I think it's such a I think it's a brilliant idea because the fun thing about even when we when we refer to the, the events in the Bible we call them Bible stories and and it, it, that is what th- that is what they are, but, but it, it from an entertainment perspective we usually your mind goes, Oh, a story is a fictional tale that's told but these things actually happened. These are, you know, Bible uh, historical events that we are portraying. You know, we don't necessarily know all the specifics of what went through the people's minds, but they're human beings. And, uh, you know, characters like the apostles, uh, uh, and, or the, well, they were disciples at the time when they're being chosen by Jesus, you know, and, uh, and the blind guy who got his sight healed i mean these are people real human beings that actually existed that actually encountered this individual that turned the world upside down and we are we are rightly so we're focused on on jesus christ that is the whole point but but we need to i think i think it's hugely beneficial for us to actually hear the testimony of people who who experienced him and what they experience from their perspective. And, and it helps make it much more real. And wow, is it ever, and I gotta say, I'm really impressed with uh, Tracy's writing. Um, any actor will tell you they love acting, but it's really tough when the writing's not very good to try to you know, get into the emotion of it and bring it to life. But uh, her writing really, at least for me, really does work. Um, and I've just enjoyed immensely uh, the the stuff that I've done there um, and I'm working on uh, another one uh, that she gave me a script for uh, <clears throat> but I haven't gotten around to recording it again but but uh, anyway so l- I just wanted to put a huge plug in there because it's one of the I'm it's one of the things I'm enjoying uh, even though it's not comedy um, it is one of the things I'm enjoying um, most in, in you know in my my voiceover ex- career. Yeah, I tell you, I I can't say enough about her talent. She is a remarkably talented um, young lady. Uh, I don't know Nathan if you've seen any of the videos that she's done where she'll take a, a Odyssey and use it as a soundtrack, an Odyssey episode and use it as a soundtrack, and then make a video where she's acting out all the parts. Oh wow, that's amazing! No, I haven't seen them. She's made a ton of them, and she's got a pretty big following. Austin, you got, you all have seen, seen those, right? Yeah. And and she does a great job. I mean, she's she plays all the parts, including the male parts and the female parts, and she she'll do all the roles, and and she lip syncs to all of them, and she's a lot. They're like spot on. That's really she, fun. You know, she'll do two or three minute clips out of these uh, out of these episodes, and they're great. Well, I hope to meet Tracy in person one day. And I also want to do a plug for her, too, because right now um, she's running a Patreon campaign to help produce um, new episodes and help the series continue on a more regular basis. So if anybody wants to um, help contribute to that, um, there'll be a link to that in the show notes of this. Uh, we're actually in the description of this YouTube video. Excellent. Support it. Yes, absolutely. And it's back to Tasha. One more for Phil. Here we go again. <laughs> Tasha! <laughs> Are there any updates on Iliad House you can share? Speaking of Iliad House, as I was just doing and talking about Tracy, um, yeah, I'm I'm uh, trying to finish it up. I've the first three episodes are finished, complete, in the can. Um, the last three episodes are in various stages of completion. 
Um, I've just uh, I've had to, I've I've had setbacks and delays because you know when you do a Kickstarter campaign to start up a new project, uh, you don't always make enough money to do it, and so I <laughs> I used up as much as I possibly can of the money, and then I had to go make more money. Uh, in order to be able to complete it, but I think I've got enough now, and I'm uh, hopefully hopefully I'm uh, I'm back in production with it, and uh, doing a, the post on it, and um, we'll we'll hopefully have it all finished up very soon. It's in it's it's coming. Believe me, it's coming. I nobody wants this thing finished more than I do. It's been three years, so <laughs> um, I really would like to have it finished and and out there. And it's been very enjoyable, and uh, I really have enjoyed working on the on the production side of things more than. I normally do on this episode on on this project, um, but it's been a, a great uh, a great project and a lot of fun, and uh, hopefully it'll uh, people will like it and want more. We'll see. We'll go from there. Yeah, I've, um, I've as one of the backers of the Kickstarter, I got to hear the first episode, and I have to say, and you're in it. It's really. Yeah. Yeah. Don't be shy. You know you're in it. Oh well, yeah, that's that's pretty exciting too. But even though I, I had read parts of the scripts and uh, heard um, a good portion of it, or the, the scripts for the show, even after hearing the first episode, I was wanting so much, like, really? Even though I had read it, just the way everything was put together, it's like, man, I really, really want to hear what happens next in this. Well, it has been a great experience doing it. It's been a big learning experience for me in a lot of ways. Um, it's been a lot of fun to put together. Again, like I said, I'm doing a lot more post-production on this, a lot of the stuff after the fact than I, than I normally do on shows. Um, normally once I've written them and then directed the actors in the studio, it's handed off to a production engineer, and I don't really hear it again until it's completed. Um, but this time, you know, the necessity is the mother of invention, so I had to jump in and actually do the, the post-production on it too. And that is just so much fun. It's it's a it's a blast to do it. It's a blast to do the foley. Um, it's a different kind of acting. You're still acting, but uh, it's just a different kind of acting. So you're you're then acting with your feet, or you're acting with your hands, and you're really trying to figure out exactly how can I make this sound real. And um, and and it's been a real lesson also in how to do how to do uh, production in your house, <laughs> how to, how to do it without actually spending any money. Uh, being creative, um, and I've always been a big fan of that anyway, because um, you know Hollywood puts out these productions now, and they're they're hundred a hundred million dollars for a movie, and they're they're good. I, I don't want to say that they're not good, but I look at that and say, wow, a hundred million dollars went into that. And I I come from a different era where um, they spent far less money on the production of the film and put far more effort into it and love into it, and I think made better films. And so I'm sort of like, you know, part of me says, let's do this as a labor of love. And this kind of goes back to also, if I made this goes back to something that we, where we were talking about at the very beginning of this interview, which is the idea of you know, way back, you know, back in those days, as Jeff said earlier, <laughs> when uh, how you would sell a project was a lot different than how you can actually sell and market a project these days. And uh, I, I don't know about you, Nathan, but I feel like, uh, with the internet, it's such a great thing. If we had had that back then, um, boy, that would have been just a great, it's such a, such a great tool because you really can get everything out there. You can produce your stuff on your, on your computer by yourself in your house and produce really good stuff and then get it out. You have a distribution means on your computer, still on, on the computer. I mean, it, yes, it, I'm, I'm making it sound a lot easier than it is, I know, but still there's, there are ways for you to get the product out there, and, uh, and, and, and everybody can do that now, and, and that's what's really fun. It's really a blast to do that sort of thing. Yeah, I remember, we, we, I remember having to mail cassettes to the radio stations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people listening to this interview are, are now going, what does he mean by cassette? What's a. Yeah. And, and the other question is, what does he mean by mail? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember when we were doing the post production for Little Dogs. And we, and i you know, the only thing, the only contribution that I could make at that point was I could stay there and when it was done, I could drive it to the airport and put, you know, drive the tapes yeah. to the airport and ship them out. Yeah, the, in those giant uh, video ma cassette masters that were the size of a, I don't know what. Nowadays, it's not, you know, not, you wouldn't even think of doing anything like that. But these, but then that was the best way to do it. So I was looking at the airport yeah. schedules and 
I hope traffic's not going to be too bad, and I got to get in there and get it. You know. Wow, and that really wasn't that long ago. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's just great to live in an era where the technology is such that any that anybody can do this. I mean, look at you. You you know, three young people who are doing their own podcast. You know, in, in years gone by, you would never have been able to distribute this thing out there at all. You'd have had to figure out, you know, to, to any anybody except your immediate family, you, you wouldn't be able to put it out there. But now you can put it out there to everybody. Jerry Seinfeld said this on about comedians and cars getting coffee, his his new series that's out there. It's been actually, like he's in season eight of his series now. But uh, when he first premiered it, uh, they said, are you going to put this on television? And he said, why would I want to limit myself? Right, exactly. If I put it on television now, I'm going to get one network and it's going to have a certain amount of viewers. And sure, that'll be nice. But tomorrow we open worldwide i premiere yeah. this thing around the world tomorrow i don't have to wait until the network recoups its money it's right here it's available and it's right here go for it yeah. so and i'm thinking wow that's fantastic that's awesome well we've had a a lot of fun questions and actually a lot more fun answers but now we got a really fun part of this interview that i'm sure lots of people will like to hear and that is you guys doing your voices and I asked Jeff about this, and he said it would be better, better than having doing a scene just to have you guys ad-lib as the characters. So if you guys are uh, game for it, this is what we'd like you to do. This is the scenario. Millard and John claude and Gruffy and Sully are walking in a cave, exploring a cave, and they get trapped inside with the pitch dark, and the cave collapses around them. And what would happen? What would they say to each other? Well, Millard, uh, nice shortcut. I'm sorry, Gruffy. I'm not Gruffy. You're Sully. Gruffy. Gruffy was the one who led us in when here. You, when you said shortcut, silly me. See, I was thinking that meant it would take us less time, right, to get to where we wanted to go, and it wouldn't be, wouldn't be nearly as dark. So this is not really as much a shortcut, perhaps, as, as it is a long cut not even a cut it's just a long it's a, it's a long dark just 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 take a moment for a moment and smell the smell mmm bananas yeah that's what it is that's why we came um, this way yeah um i think you're the only one that's actually smelling bananas <laughs> you know what i'm saying oh yes, yes really i know what you're saying wait a minute this looks very familiar. I think we've been around this path before. Ooh la la! What, what are we talking about? Wait a minute. I think, I think my plane is here somewhere. If your plane can get into this cave and get us out of here, uh, I say go for it. But I gotta tell you, Gruffy, I don't know how you think we've been here at this pass before. It's pitch dark in here. That's what I'm saying. It looks exactly the same as it did a minute ago. Well, I can see perfectly. I don't know what you guys are talking. Oh, ow! Wait a minute. Oh, ow! That hurt. What, what was that? Oh, that was the roof of the cave. Ha! Ah, sorry. Uh, anybody want a banana? I'll take one. Wow! It's remarkable how happy a French squirrel could be lost in a dark cave. Yeah, but if we go down there, maybe we can eat him. Good point. Hadn't thought of that. We are animals, after all, you know. What do you think, Gruffy? I'm open to it. I'll be honest with you. I don't mind a little squirrel with some uh, spaghetti sauce or something. Jean-Claude? Jean-Claude? Are you down there? Down there? Down there? Wait a minute. Follow that squirrel. He may know the way out of here. I think I, 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 think I found the way out. Wait, wait. I think... Wait. What am I talking, I talking about? We're following a squirrel. <laughs> And that's the last anyone ever heard of Gruffy, Jean-Claude Millard, and Sully. Beep! 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 And their, their locator finally went dead. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. That was awesome. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you know, it is. It's just like a glove. You just kind of, they kind of, uh, you put it on again and then do some stuff and then you... Take it off and go eat dinner. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I've got to say, I'm going to miss my friends here in the jungle. But on the other hand, the jungle's all mine. 
Can't be said. You mean all yours? <laughs> oh well, mostly mine, I guess. You can take the ground, and I'll take the trees. <laughs> now that Millard's gone, I can move back into my house. <laughs> I'll have to clean it up, though. There's bananas everywhere. <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's, this has really, <clears throat> this has really been a great experience hearing you guys want to do the voices like I, I'm, hopefully people listening will enjoy that too, getting a little taste of how those Jungle Jam recording sessions are, or were. Th this was fairly tame, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Compared to what we used to do. We were really just getting warmed up and, and, uh, it gets, once we get past the warm up and then we get exhausted then it gets really crazy right exactly <laughs> funniest stuff is at two in the morning when we really needed to, to get it done oh my well this has been a lot of fun guys it really has thank you so much for letting us interview you and um thanks jeff too for uh pushing me to make sure we can get all three of you guys together for the interview instead of just separately it's been a lot of fun yeah it has been oh it's been a blast well we thank you uh Austin and, and uh, Ashley and Tasha, you guys are great. Yeah. Thank you for remembering everything that we've never <laughs> Hey, Believe me, the next time I need a resume, I'm calling you, Austin. When I, when I, when I finally do lose my memory entirely, I'll, I'll be calling you up and having you... you know. <laughs> if you remember his number. <laughs> well, good point. Well, thank you, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you.